Today, I'm gonna build five Lego shields and then put them to the test against some of the most dangerous weapons to see if they can actually protect me. Oh! For the first one, I'm gonna build a classic knight's shield, but the shields and weapons we're gonna test them against are gonna be getting crazier and crazier. Also, I'm legally obligated to tell you, don't do this at home. I'm a professional. <laughs> the first step is to lay out several panels using plates in a classic shield shape, and then once we get all the curves and angles and stuff using our wedge plates, we'll come in with some hinges on the back to connect everything together and make it curve. We just gotta lock together all these plates. So as you can see, I have the main shapes of the shield laid out, and I also included these two little panels, which for a special feature we're going to add later. We just need to connect these together in a curve so that it actually looks like a shield. So for that, I think I'm gonna build a frame out of Technic, specifically these little pieces, because they have just a little bit of an angle to them, and if we connect three of them together like this, we have literally the exact top-down profile of the shield that we wanna build. So if we just separate these with some axles in between, we can extend this even further, and then just stick the plates onto several of these. So we're basically just building up a skeleton and behind these panels to fit them together. So let's build like 20 more of these and line them all the way across the back of the shield, lock them together, and I'm thinking we just do the same thing for these side panels. I'm really trying to make it so that these pieces don't just pull off the axles so that this thing doesn't break apart. So for that, I'm basically just taking a couple of these little lift arms and putting them in here lengthwise to actually connect these ones together with a little axle that goes through. And so far, it looks like that could work pretty good. Now we just gotta add a bunch more plates to the back of this to lock everything together, and then we'll add the handles so we can actually hold it. To build the handle on the back of the shield, I'm gonna use some old bionicle pieces. We'll use a few of these little joint pieces like that. And these we can actually connect into the Technic bricks that are already here using this little axle hole. If I bring this up like this, will that hold? You know, surprisingly that holds decently enough. We just need a little thing we can grab on this side, so an actual handle. There's just one more thing I want to add to this, and that is going to make use of those little holes I added earlier. So if we attach some spikes to these plates I built, and then add a few of these little Technic hinges, you can see this fits perfectly in here, and now we have a nice little spike that we can flip around during battle. I don't know, I just thought it'd be kind of cool to add. So now I just gotta build up the other one of those, and then add the design on the front. I'm gonna make it look like the Knights Templar emblem. Then we finally test out our first shield. All right, guys, as you can see here, we have our knight shield. This thing has quite a bit of coverage. I can hide behind it. I mean, it's life size. It's a knight shield. I also added a bit of trim around the outside of the shield, just using a different color of plate. Kind of make it pop a little bit better. But here's hoping this one will actually protect me. We have five levels of weapons we're gonna be testing these shields with, starting with the least dangerous all the way up to the most dangerous weapons. And whichever level causes the shield to break will determine its safety rating. So we're gonna start with level one, the ballistics test. We're gonna see how this thing works. Here we go. Okay. Hey, it's working. <laughs> oh, stop. Oh, we lost a few pieces on the front. Look at that. Well, I mean, the shield's still in one piece. All we gotta do is reattach a few plates, but I'd say it passes level one. Next up, we're going to do the coverage test, taking paint-filled water balloons and launching them. So I'm gonna switch around my little spikes here in hopes that they will pop the balloon and it'll be less of an impact. Tana's gonna launch this balloon and I'm just gonna hope it doesn't hit me in the no-no spot. Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> It's red everywhere. It looks like a zombie just died. I want you to try and get this one like center on. You got this. Oh! Oh! Oh my gosh! Are you kidding me? All right, guys, I had to take a little bit of a break. Oh! <laughs> this shield made it to level two, so I'd give it a safety rating of two. It actually held up pretty well, but I kind of broke when I hit the ground. <laughs> Still, let's build the next one. The next shield I want to test out is the Captain America Marvel set. And this is obviously an actual Lego set, but it doesn't even have a handle on the back and it's super flimsy. So I'm going to build this and then upgrade it to look more like the Captain America shield from Marvel Rivals. And then we'll actually test out the durability to see if it works. See, I've already kind of gathered up all the pieces we're going to need. So let's build this guy up.
All right, I'm about halfway through the shield build. As you can see, the way this is kind of designed is in 36 equal sections, and they're all hinged using a combination of these little hinge bricks right here in the middle. And then out on the sides, those sections are locked together with these cool little one by four rounded pieces. And since they're rounded on the sides, they don't touch together and break. And so far, this thing is pretty strong. I've seen a lot of people say that they don't like this set specifically because you're doing the same thing over and over and over just to build all the different sections. But I actually find it kind of fun because you just build 36 of the same thing every time. I just got to finish up building the frame of this guy, and then we'll put on the top sections, which are gonna make up the colors and the pattern that goes on the front of the shield. Now all we have to do is take all our little panels and snap them on these clips around the outside. Just like that. Have it. The finished Captain America shield. Look at that. That thing is thick. And actually, it's pretty heavy as well, but not extremely sturdy. As you can see, each of these panels Actually, it's not not terrible. <laughs> so there's a few things I want to add to this. Number one, a handle on the back. So because because it doesn't have one. And then as you can see, it's just a little bit small. So I'm thinking if we have enough pieces, we can actually go out one more level of red on the sides here to extend it just a little bit extra and make it a bit bigger. Wow, that is actually a lot bigger. I think this is a lot closer to life size. Unfortunately, the only part I can take credit for is the outside part. So now we just need to add a handle to the back of this, and I already added these four little lift arms. I just kind of took this part and put those into the axles that were already there. So that's a really strong connection. Then through these lift arms, we can add a few regular axles. Now I'm just gonna add a single metal axle that goes all the way across, and this will make it super sturdy so that it doesn't break off. Let's see, oh dude. That is really strong. And that's actually quite comfortable too. Look at that. I'm just gonna add a few little detailed upgrades. Just kinda adding some plates and tiles to the outside to kinda bulk up some areas and make it look a little bit more high tech. And then we'll finally be ready to test this guy out. Here we have our Captain America shield. As you can see, I added a lot of technological details on the front just to kind of make it look more futuristic. And we also extended it. So this is actually quite a bit bigger than the original Lego set. So it's time to test it out. Dude, I feel safe already. Oh yeah. Oh, ah, ah. it's still working. <laughs> right in the... Gee, did you do enough damage? Hey guys, it's still together. Minor damage. Let's move on to the next test. <laughs> guys, let me also introduce you to our test dummy. This is Bryce, as you can see. For a few tests, we're gonna mount our shields to this pole here, and Bryce is gonna hide behind, because some weapons, I, it's just not safe. Oh! <laughs> Good man. Next up, we're gonna do the projectile test. We have a slingshot and a bow and arrow. Let's see how it does. That one went straight through. Definitely not bad. Let's move on to archery. Actually, it deflected that decently well. Like, it didn't hit the dummy, which is kind of impressive. I'm gonna give this one all the power. Ooh, actually that one did hit the dummy. You can see it hit him right there. Well, I'd say that this one does not pass the second test. Unfortunately, we gotta give this one a rating of two, which is not great. Let's build the next one. The next one I wanna build is a shield that actually folds out on your arm. So essentially it'll just be an arm guard, but when I push a button, it'll be motorized so that two flaps fold up to extend it as a shield. So let's start with the base of panels and build it up from there. I think for this one, I'm gonna make it look a little more futuristic. So I'm gonna go with the color scheme of light blue and black. Before I figure out how this is actually going to fold, I need to create an arm mount on the inside of this one that'll be comfortable enough to wrap around my arm and sturdy enough so that the whole thing doesn't fall apart. And I think the best thing to do for that is to build up a layer with Technic bricks on the back of this and then we can build some mixel joint straps to go around my arm. We can just snap together these Technic bricks using some of these black pins and doing this will help us create a really sturdy frame that we'll attach the joints to. That way they won't just rip off the plates. Cause I've done that before and that's how your whole shield breaks. <laughs> There, we have a sturdy base. To strap this guy to my arm, I'm just gonna build up some straps using mixel joints. And that should give us enough flexibility to be comfortable and also strong enough to hold on your arm. So, funny story from my week. In my last video, I built a giant Lego space station. It was like 35 pounds, super heavy, and like six feet long. I said at the end of the video, like, hey, I might hang this up in the studio, that'd be pretty cool. So we decided to do that after I had finished shooting and all that. So we put it on the lift, and we lifted it 20 feet up in the air to hang it from the beam. And after hanging it, about five minutes later, I just walked through the yellow door, and I heard this really loud crash. The entire spaceship had fallen from the safety chain that actually broke 20 feet and just shattered into a billion pieces. This is like 25 hours of work. And so yeah, guys, we don't uh, we don't have the space station anymore. <laughs> Praise the Lord, I wasn't under it. It was like a split second after I'd walked inside. Anyway, we got these straps to actually soften them so they're a little more comfortable. I'm gonna put some little boat pieces 
on the bottom here. This will make them so they don't pinch a bunch of hairs. And then we have some nice straps which we can put around the back of this guy, right around. Okay, actually it's a pretty decent shield mount. And as you can see, it's really easy to take off. So now we can attach our main panels to the top of this and we just need to figure out how we're gonna motorize the side panels and make them fold. First, let's just make some simple Technic hinges with a few pieces to connect these together. Snap that on. We're gonna need a lot of torque to actually move this guy. And so if we build up some sort of worm gear assembly using a little worm gear connected to this motor here, this should not only give us a lot of torque, but also make it so it spins pretty slowly. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So now we just have to figure out a way to install two motors, a battery box, a remote control, and our worm gears to this and still be able to fit our arm in there. So this might take a little while. <laughs> All right, I think I got the mechanism figured out, which means if this works, all we have to do... The heck? Turn that up in a minute. As you can see, it closes, and then it opens like that. It's a few tiny little things that keep snagging on each other, but the mechanism on the back is working, as you can see. I just got two motors that are mounted on the top, and then I have some 90 degree actuators that move that rotational movement down to the worm gears. So a few little bug fixes on that. The last thing I gotta do on this is just add some cool details to the outside and just make it look a little bit better. And then be able to test it out. Before we test out this next one, make sure you subscribe so you can become a member of the Brick Science Stud Army. That way you won't miss any of our future videos. As you can see, we have our arm guard shield, so it's pretty cool. It does cover the whole bit of your arm, so I kind of tried to design this like that one shield from Captain America in Infinity War. But as you can see, mine actually opens up to become a full-size shield that you can hide behind. Now, I don't know how strong this is going to be, but that's what we're here to test. Do your worst. Ah, ah, oh, no. Oh no, I broke it already. Gosh darn. Now, the true test is, can I put this back on? If I can, does it still work? Yes, it does. So not great, it's a little small, but let's move on to the next test anyway. <laughs> to test the projectiles on this one, we're going to tape our dummy's hand, and then we're just gonna put it on his arm. We can shoot it from there. Let's start with our slingshot here. There's not a lot of coverage with this shield, that's for sure. Actually, that did deflect that shot. Let's move up to some more dangerous ammo. Oh, that is not ideal. <laughs> As you can see, we cracked that plate right there, so it hit right there, but our shield just got demolished completely. You know, I'm realizing with these Lego shields, <laughs> they're uh, not super sturdy. So for this shield, I gotta give it another rating of two. So far, we haven't had any shields make it past the second level, so we gotta up our game. For this next one, I wanna build a propeller shield, which is basically going to have several blades that spin really fast to see if you can throw stuff and it'll actually deflect. So first step for this, we need a motor powerful enough to run it. So we have these L motors here, but as you see, it spins pretty slow. So I'm gonna connect two of these motors together in sequence and then add a gear ratio to make our propeller spin as fast as possible. What we wanna do is have the motor connected to a large gear and then have the propeller connected to a smaller gear, something like this. Look at how much faster that is. But it also means it has quite a bit less torque because of that gear ratio, which is why we're gonna use two motors. Okay, here we go. We have our holder. <laughs> Now, this is super strong, it's not coming apart, and we're ready to build a propeller. And for that, I think the perfect thing is to use two of these gears like this, because not only do they have an axle hole for our metal axle, but also they have connection points on the top where we can connect our propeller. So my thought is, if we just take some little pins like this and put them in a little pinwheel pattern, then we can take four lift arms and go out from there. And now if we sandwich one more in front of this, we have the start of a propeller, and that thing is pretty strong. See so guys, it's super powerful. <laughs> now I'm just gonna extend these guys out and build them up with plates and make them a little thicker so they can actually deflect stuff. So I did some tests with this gearbox and the motors do not have enough torque to turn this. So we're just going to use a single motor because look how fast this goes with just one. And it doesn't need anything else. And I should wear eye protection. That was such a waste of time, but it'd be cool for something. As you can see, I tried to build these as strong as possible so they wouldn't break. If we turn it on, it starts spinning really fast, and I can actually feel this thing. It feels like a gyroscope. The benefit of this shield is that you can see through it. So I can see the drawback might be that uh, it doesn't work, but if it does work, it's an invisible shield. Let's test this guy out. Start her up. Hey, it deflected one. Is it just shooting through? Ah. <laughs> oh gosh, this is not working for this test, but it also didn't break, so. Up next, we have the projectile test. Pop it on like this. He can hide behind that, and we'll see if it hits the dummy or not. 
I actually can't tell on that one. It might have pushed it over just a little bit. Let's try one more. Ooh, well that deflected it. <laughs> oh, it's, it's done. Yeah, so it definitely hit like right here and then just broke off. <laughs> Look at this, it hit right there. It stopped an arrow, so that's pretty cool. So I guess actually it sort of passes the projectile test. Next up, the sword test. Pop this guy on. <laughs> I can definitely attack the guy from here, but maybe if I go straight on, it'll stop it. That's a no. <laughs> I mean, it was definitely hitting the shield, but it also just went right through it. So I guess it passed level three, which gives it a level three safety rating. Let's build the next one. For my next shield idea, I want to build a giant blast shield that I can fit my entire body behind with a plexiglass panel in the front to shield me from my future experiments, because I do a lot of them on this channel. So my plan is to repurpose the old Lego bed we built, which is comprised of several layers of Technic and bricks because it's super strong already. Also, this thing's about six feet long, so it's the perfect height for someone to hide behind. As you can see on the inside of these, I use Technic bricks to lock together the layers vertically. And those tan pieces are stacked plates going across in both directions. First thing I wanna do for this is take off all the blue plates and replace them with gray. I mean, just look at all the work that went into this bed. Every single layer is locked together. Now, to replace it with gray. I need to add some triangular legs to this that are going to come up like this and then make it so it doesn't tip over. So for that, we're gonna need to put some Technic bricks right here in this wall. And we'll just make sure that each one of these Technic bricks has two plates in between it so we can cross connect a piece on the outside. And to build the window for this, we actually have this perfectly cut piece of plexiglass, which we actually need to peel off the stuff still. That was not satisfying at all. Okay. Then to hold this guy in, if we take a layer of plates, snap that on top, that should pinch it right in between those Technic pieces. So I'm just gonna build that up real quick and then we'll add the legs that are gonna make this be able to stand up. For the legs on our blast shield, I wanna build a few more of these, which are really strong Technic beams and then link them together in a triangle shape. And what makes these so strong is that they're built in such a way where you can lock together all the layers vertically by just adding a single Technic piece across. And when you do that, it makes it so that they cannot break open and it's really, really strong. So I'm just gonna build up a few more of these long ones and then we'll link them together and connect it to the main structure. Here we have the blast shield. It's a little bit windy outside, so I'm hoping it doesn't blow over. But as you can see, I can go behind it and hide behind it like this. So this one, I think I'm the most confident in because I spent so many hours building it. <laughs> so I feel extra safe. Let's start off with the ballistics test. This is so cool. As you can see, I have a fantastic view through this little window here. So I feel pretty safe. I'm untouchable back here. I've had it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was scary. It definitely passes the ballistics test. Next up on this shield, we have the coverage test. <sighs> if it hits right at the window and shatters. Oh, <laughs> I got a little sprayed. We got a teeny bit of a hole. But actually, for the most part, I'm okay. <laughs> wow, that actually broke that? It has a bit of a hole in it. It is still standing. Yeah, launch one more, and I'll just go to the side of it. Ah, okay. Oh, man. The blast shield's still standing. So it does pass, and we can move on to the projectile test. That stopped the arrow. Okay, this is really working. Let's look at that. So as you can see, it stopped the arrows. This one didn't even touch our dummy at all. Look, the arrow just punctured right through there. <laughs> and what's nice about this is these are replaceable for $2.50 each. Well, it definitely passes the projectile test. Let's now do the sword test. Oh yeah, wow. It's definitely not going through. Let's see if you can stab it. Oh, you can stab through it. But it does also kind of stop the sword because of the friction there. I'd say it definitely passes the sword test. It's still upright. There's only one more level of weapon we can test against this. For level five, we're gonna test the heat resistance with a flamethrower. Here goes. See that? Ooh, do you hear that crack? Whoa. Look, it melted the Lego pieces. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's crazy. Wait, so that means on the back then, there's like no heat and no deforming on the back. And as you can see, our dummy back here is completely fine, completely shielded from the heat, which means that this thing actually works. Well guys, that's all for this video. Huge thanks for watching. Check out one of these two videos popping up on your screen and I'll talk to you in the next Brick Science. See ya.